Hi guys, I'm Sriya and I teach biology for fun. Have you ever wondered how a muscle contracts? Okay, so last class I talked about the contracting unit of a muscle that is the sacromere which is enclosed between two Z lines. So you can check that video out. But today we're going to talk about how that contracting unit works so that the muscle contracts by a theory which was given by A.F. Huxley, H.E. Huxley and Hansen. Okay, these are the three people called the sliding filament theory. So let's get started. Okay, let's start with the basics about why should a muscle contract. We're talking about skeletal muscles here. So assume the nervous system first. The motor neuron sends a electric impulse via the motor nerve to a muscle to make it contract. So this is a voluntary contraction. So let us look at this area. This is the axon, I mean uh, the axon terminal of a neuron and this is a muscle ka sacrolemma, okay? So the axon has many vesicles in it and these vesicles have many neurotransmitters in it and here the neurotransmitter is acetylcholine. Acetyl choline also known as ACH or AC receptor so this when it reaches the axon terminal the electrical impulse in uh, in the form of these neurotransmitters it's moved to this subneural cleft or the area between the muscle and the neuron also known as the neuromuscular jun junction all right and this is the motor end plate okay so the acetylcholine receptors are released in the subneural cleft. It's the space between the neuron and the muscle. Now these acetylcholine receptors, they bind, uh, I mean uh, <laughs> neurotransmitters, they bind to the receptors present on the muscle sacrolemma. Okay. So when they bind to the receptors present on the muscle sacrolemma, the action potential is transferred to the muscle that means whatever command it is uh, the brain is asking for the muscle to contract is transferred to the muscle and then several other changes happen which we are going to talk about so when it's transferred to the muscle you can assume this is the muscle structure and this is the sacromere these are two z lines okay so this is the sacrolemma the uh, signal has been transferred to the muscle imagine so these, I talked to you about T-tubules and L-tubules, that is the sacroplasmic reticulum of the muscle or endoplasmic reticulum basically. So T-tubules are the ones which are transverse, Matlab, they are parallel to the Z line, this way, okay. L-tubules are perpendicular to the Z line or parallel to uh, the myofibril. So T-tubule, it helps in passing the action potential or uh, yeah the threshold potential throughout the muscle and l tubules l tubules are the storehouses of ca calcium 2 plus ions okay so these are l tubules and they have ca2 plus ions so when action potential is transferred throughout the muscle cell this l tubule it produces calcium ions in large excess and this calcium ion is now responsible for the contraction of the muscles, which we're going to talk about. Yeah, all right, let's talk about sliding filament theory now. Um, okay, let's get started. So this is the actin filament. This is the myosin filament. Actin filament, let me remind you again, it's the light band. Myosin filament is the dark band. We discussed the structures also in the previous class. Okay, check it out. Um, so actin filament, I told you it has troponin. So troponin has three units. Troponin C for binding calcium, troponin I for inhibiting and troponin T that binds to the tropomyosin. Okay, so now this calcium ion which is released, it binds to the troponin C. Okay, so when it binds to troponin C, that causes some structural changes and the troponin T which is attached to the tropomyosin, it shifts in such a way and the tropomyosin that is this blue band that you can see here, tropomyosin also changes in such a way that it exposes the myosin binding site. So basically, tro this troponin and tropomyosin, they hide the myosin binding site 
but when calcium ion gets binded to troponin it changes the structure of tropomyosin and that will expose the myosin binding size uh, site this is myosin filament you know that myosin filament has two sites that is actin binding site and atp binding site so this first of all atp is bound to the atp binding site in the myosin filament then it goes and gets attached to the actin uh, at the actin binding site of uh, the myosin filament okay so it's attached here because calcium ion has been taken up by troponin oh my god sorry anyways uh, let's come to the second step so now atp has been attached that gives it the energy to go and bind to the actin now muscle has to contract and if you remember how this looks like this is a z line this is a z line this is an actin 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 let me draw a myosin and this is a myosin 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 so for this to contract the two z lines have to come closer that means that the actin filaments have to keep moving across the myosin filament okay myosin filaments uh, remain same in length but actin filament ka length keeps changing because now this myosin is binded to this troponin right i mean to this part of actin now this will slide it'll slide across the actin you can see the strain here this angle strain here first it was like this then it completely slides like this so that the actin moves forward and the myosin goes and binds to the next actin binding site or the next myosin binding site on the actin so this is the sliding part okay so this is the formation of cross bridge this structure is known as cross bridge next this cross bridge will start shifting sidewards okay so that this myosin filament can move forward coming to the third step that is here now myosin gets detached from that particular actin binding site after it's moved forward okay and when it gets detached atp which gets broken down into adp plus phosphate these adp and phosphate are released that's because this myosin utilizes atp for its energy okay because with the release of adp and phosphate there is also release of energy so now this myosin is again free then another calcium gets bound to this troponin which causes structural changes then myosin goes attached to this troponin so this myosin has moved from this troponin to this troponin okay so that means it it's uh, it kept on moving forward and actin filament kept kept contracting just try to visualize this okay actin filament this is myosin it's getting bound here now this is moving forward that just means that this z line is coming closer and closer and as the z line contracts and contracts muscle contracts and for relaxation uh, basically nothing happens it just moves away from the cross bridge and uh, calcium ions get back and get stored in the l tubules so that was the video guys i hope you liked it and please let me know which topic i should cover next and yeah that's it like share and subscribe thank you so much for watching